going to be going through every album feeling a bit nervous, actually. I always do, because you, you, know, you never presume it's going to be, it's going to work. You know, that's the way we work in the studio. We arrive and, and with no bits and sort of turn on the gear the first day and play. There's always little edge there, I think, a bit like, what if we sort of, <laughs> nothing comes out. I think we felt with Abacab, we sort of like, you know, in many ways, you cleared out all the furniture, you know. And so with Genesis, it was a kind of a question of redecorating a little bit. And um, I think, you know, we had some areas we hadn't been in before. Um, you know, uh, we had our own studio at this point in time, which obviously we had for Abacab, but it was the first time we were able to actually record in the studio. That album was the first time we actually did write and record and mix in that environment. The Abacab prior to that was written in the house while the, the, the barn was being, or the, the cow shed was being uh, transformed into the studio. Mum is the great example of this album. This, that sums up how the album worked, you know. The version you probably heard of Mama that's there was recorded very early on. It was like the longest section, if I remember rightly, you know. And so you captured spontaneity for the first time, actually. You captured us kind of writing things and playing them very early on and recording them rather than finishing the song, going into record, you know, somewhere else later. We had various versions of it. Uh, we. We had the drum machine part, you know, and then I'd sort of bass pedal and put all these sounds on top of it. And we had a sort of atmosphere going which we knew was going to be strong. We didn't know quite what the top line was going to be. You know, it could have been a lot of things and still been good. So we sort of got a bassist down very early and worked on it like that. I suppose Mama is a song that most people, because it's drum machine based, everybody thinks it's my thing. But actually Mike was the one that came up with that. Uh, Lin, early Lin drum machine sound with the going through the gated reverb. Put it into a boogie amplifier and turned it up incredibly loud, so it just distorted and got this great sound, you know. It's full of amplifiers just jumping over the ground like this, but it used this fantastic sound. It made the drum, drum machine sound really, really good. And it was the early days of taking a, a MIDI cable out of the back of the drum machine, plugging it into a keyboard. So if you had a cowbell going da 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 and Tony put his hand on the keyboard, it would just play the rhythm, but it would play the notes, you know, so... Um, and I was into sort of this sort of John Lennon, Bebop, Alula, Echo thing. Ah, I can't see. And Hugh Padgham had bought in this record that had just come out by Grandmaster Flash which was the message, which uh, he put on. And we, this is kind of really, it's hard to believe now, but it's really early days of rap, you know, so no one had really heard this stuff. And he put this like, um, you know, it's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. <laughs> and we all thought that was great, you know, let's laugh at such character, so you know, it's great. So we kept playing it. And, well, and we just happened to be going back into the studio after having listened to it to do Mama. And so we were just sort of improvising our way around it, and um, every now and again I go, ha ha ha! And, you know, the guys would laugh. And anyway, kind of, it became the thing. It became the kind of the hook of the song. And it's all because of Grandmaster Flash. And you ask most Genesis fans that, and that would be a million miles away. But that's how it happened. <laughs> That's always what I always call one of our little sort of beatly chug songs, you know, like sort of uh, um, that beetle sound they have. A little sort of sweet little song, really. Like Rocky Raccoon, I always think of it, you know, which is always a song I liked a lot by the Beatles and great feel, really. I mean, I, I started playing that piano riff and then Phil started doing this riff and we knew we had a feel, you know, quite know where it was going. And I just kept it purposely, kept all the chords very simple and just sort of, sort of, sort of had a didn't go, you didn't want to kind of go miles in any direction. I wanted to kind of stay where it was because it felt really good. But why does it always seem to be me looking at you with you looking at me? It's always the same, it's just a shame, that's all. At the time, anyway, it was much more obviously radio friendly than Mama, which was a little bit of a dark horse for. Uh, for you know, AM radio in America. I think at that point it was still AM FM, you know. I was kind of surprised it turned out to be a big hit in America. Um, I suppose it's got a sort of catchy little phrase built out on the word, that's all, but um, it was, I think it was just our time was right in America. I think around about that album where things just started um, working on the radio. 
writing them and playing the stage for years and years and suddenly songs, we got better at writing shorter songs. Home by the Sea, where we were able to improvise. Uh, Phil had this, this is the riff, the dun, chicka jung, jung, that, which was the second part. And Mike and I just improvised on top of it. And we made up a couple of 30 minute tapes of us just improvising on top of it. And then went through it and just found the good bits and stuck them all together. And that's exactly what you've got on the, on, on the, on the piece. And, uh, and I think it's one of my favourite of our instrumental pieces of all. That album also was the beginning, the first time we used like electronic drums. You know, and Simmons was a new drum system that had come out. And it was like playing on four mica tops, you know, little rep octagonal four mica tops. They eventually started to make them feel more, a bit more like drum skins, you know, real drums, but it never really worked. And Home by the Sea, the that was all, you know, that, that, I sat down and played that pattern on that sound with those presets and, you know, it had such a lot of atmosphere and everyone started playing along. It was a bit like, a, kind of comparable to Intruder with Peter's thing where you just sort of get a sound and you play with it and suddenly that's, that's a musical part, you know, and everybody jams along with it. When we were writing the song, Phil had this one phrase he kept singing, home by the sea, home by the sea, and I thought, well, I, I was writing the lyrics to this thing, I thought, well, home by the sea, what does that conjure up? I thought, well, let's have a spooky home by the sea, you know, and the idea of a guy of a burglar going in there and actually getting enveloped and suddenly being all these ghosts surrounding him, everything just quite appealed to me. And also some of the melodic, uh, some of the little keyboard things that were happening sort of felt a bit ghosty. And I thought that would be quite a nice thing to do. And then the idea really, uh, which the song is of, of the idea that we're telling our life story through our songs, which is sort of represented by the third verse of the song, as we relive our lives and what we tell you, which I think is quite a sort of strong thing. And it's, it's sort of what you do in a group, I think. Side one, as it were, the old side one, it's, it's kind of got the three best known songs on it. I remember that, all and A Home by the Sea. And the second side, there's slightly more quirky songs on it. Um, it's a slightly forgotten side, I think, in many ways, of Genesis. And I think it contains a couple of, you know, of, of classic songs. One of them, Silver Rainbow, which I think is a, is a real favourite of mine. You know, it was a, um, Phil started playing this kind of, uh, sort of like Adam and the Ants kind of drum thing, you know, with the Simmons and just banging his way through it. And, started playing this piano riff on top of it and I just thought it was a really strong song and I, I hoped it would go a little further than it did actually but it wasn't sort of recognised. I would put Genesis as one of my favourite albums I think because it's a nice balance of long songs, short songs um, and I think probably the most important thing about this album actually that's the point, I think one of the main things about this album is the first time we actually went in to record having slightly changed our sound with Hugh Padgham and going back and kind of doing this remixing with Mick Davis has been doing it, you come to the Hugh Padgham albums and they sound bloody good. I think one of the, on this album, that's quite a good representation on this, was one thing that uh, had occurred in sort of keyboard land uh, between Abacab and this album was the introduction of uh, the sampling synthesizer. And, um, and a lot of, some of the sounds, you know, on the album, I mean, things like the Koto that's used in the middle of Mama, and various other little bits and pieces. But what I used to like to do was, which obviously is done a lot nowadays, was sample like little bits of music and then see what you could do with it. And an example of that is on the, on the introduction to It's Gonna Get Better, where I just recorded the beginning of this classical album. It just was four, four cello notes. And I'd originally recorded it to try and get a good string sample, you know, and I pressed it and it sounded awful. But then I just, for some reason, I pressed four notes at the same time and it just, this incredible interweaving harmonies all suddenly came up. I thought, this is brilliant, you know, fantastic. I'm doing nothing and it's sounding wonderful. Um, and so that sort of, you know, made me think and I, I just became quite a big feature within Genesis from then on, really, using those kind of ideas. There's no other bands, really, that I've come across or, you know, heard about that do things, play, you know, write like that. You know, usually in a band there's one writer or a pair of writers or there's two individual writers that submit material, but, you know, this is like... This is a lot like jazz. It's a lot like sitting down in a, in a room with three guys and just playing, and eventually, you know, it starts to sound good. 
And that's the moment you, you, you take the picture of so that you know when you go back to it, that's where you start from. That's the magic of having the chemistry of people and that's why, you know, I never take the, that kind of thing lightly. The, the fact is that the three of us can do that and not many people do that. And, you know, there's, there may be bits that are slightly suspect and there are bits that aren't as good as others, but there's some great stuff in there that came out of nowhere and it's, um, that's what's good about the band.